Hi, I'm Nancy from Metal, and today I'm going to show you how to create that cool sequence that we just saw. We've had many people asking us, how the heck do you do that? So, what do we do? We use Shapeshifter AE along with tools and presets found right in After Effects. So, let's dive right in. We'll open this project file and dive right into the displacement map. We'll look at three techniques to start with. One, animated layer masks. Two, the ramp effect and three, one of the animation presets that ships with After Effects, the 3D Pixel Storm preset. If we take a closer look, we see that this animated layer mask consists of three distinct shapes. A circular shape, a rectangular shape with rounded corners, and the plus shape from the AE Toots Plus logo. Now, let's scrub through the timeline a little further, and we see that the 3D Pixel Storm preset is already applied. This effect is based on the card wipe effect. The preset is located in the Effects and Presets panel. We'll come back to this in a bit. Now that we've had a quick look at the pre-comp, let's go ahead and rebuild this beauty from scratch. You may wish to set up some guides for yourself before you start. This will make things go much faster. Let's duplicate this layer and remove all the effects and masks. Or you can go ahead and create a new solid at 1024 by 1024 pixels. We'll then select the rounded rectangle tool. Draw a square in the middle of the comp. Let's make sure that it's centered. There. Good to go. Now make sure the mask is selected and go to the two second mark in the timeline and set a keyframe for this shape. Then go to the one second point in the timeline and click on the mask shape. This will launch a window. In this window, under shape, switch from rectangle to ellipse. Then click OK. Cool, now we have the first part of the, of the shape animation done. Next, we go to the three second mark in the timeline. Shift and drag your cursor over the control points located at the top. This will deselect them. Then select the control points at the bottom of the shape and drag them down to the bottommost guide. Next, drag your cursor over these control points to deselect them and select the topmost control points and move them to the top. Now, select mask one and duplicate it. Then go to the three second mark and delete the keyframe. This is looking good. Select the control points and drag them to the right. Do the same for the other side, and we're done with this part. Looking good. We've already created a shape animation in no time at all. The next thing we want to do is add a bevel. So we select the mask and hit the F key to bring up the mask feather controls. We'll add a 4 pixel feather to the mask shapes. Or we can add an adjustment layer and do this with your favorite blur. Personally, I like using fast blur. It's fast, clean, and it does the job well. The end result of the blur is that it adds a bevel to the edges of the shape. Notice that when we remove the feather or the blur, we're left with a flat color, in this case white. That will give us squared off edges. So add a gradation at the edges of your shape near the alpha by using the technique you're most comfortable with. Back to our shape animation. Here's what the shape animation looks like in the displacement map comp. I went ahead and applied Shapeshifter AE to a new solid in our master comp. I then assigned the displacement map comp we're creating. We also assigned a reflection map. I'll show you what that looks like in just a bit. We'll stick with spherical mapping. We brought the extrusion down to 1 and pumped up the displacement height to a value of 20. And this is the result in 3D when you use it in Shapeshifter AE. I like the rounded bevel that we're getting. I find the finesse is always in the details that we add. To make this tutorial quick, we had a comp set up already. This consisted of a couple of parallel lights. An After Effects 3D cam. We also used a reflection map. Adding a blur to the reflection map is a good idea. 
It helps to keep the focus on the shape or logo itself and not on what is reflected on the surface. And now we come to the ramp effect. I'll explain here one of the reasons that we pre-comp in After Effects. The ramp is live, so to speak. By pre-comping the ramp effect, After Effects renders the ramp effect and then passes on the rendered data to the next effect in the stack. Now, as we can plainly see, if we create and nest enough pre-comps, it will form a massive grid. We'll have pre-comps at strategic points all over the world. Have you done your fair share of pre-comping today? Not yet? Then get at it! Or do you need another dose of my Hypno Precompulator? No? Moving right along. What I'd like to do next is add a little more curvature to the surface of our 3D shape. And I'd like to vary that curvature over time. To do this, I'll use the ramp effect in AE. I want a radial ramp with the white point at the center of our circle shape and the darkest point at the edge of the circle. The result of this configuration is a conical shape. By adding the levels adjustment, we can add more of a spherical curvature to the surface. If I adjust the levels by moving the midtones up toward the whites, then I get the following results. Keep in mind that we can animate this and the shapeshifter AE surface will be modified accordingly. This makes for some very easy and very interesting animations. Let's go back to the spherical shape. Notice how we still have a little spike in the middle. To make this even more of a sphere shape, we'll simply add more blur and... There you go. Done. Good. You can see how 3D displacement is a very powerful feature and how we can take many of the 2D filters that ship with After Effects and use them in new and amazing ways. We can create sophisticated animations that look complex but are actually super simple to make. I'm really blown away by some shapeshifter samples that we receive from our customers. Back to our shape animation. What we want to do next is to vary the radial ramp and have it accommodate the plus shape. We'll do this by simply animating the end color over time to the bottom of the plus shape. We do this to add a slight curvature to the shape and thus pick up reflection a little better. Flat surfaces just don't reflect that well, neither in CG nor in real life. The next thing we do is add one of the coolest animation presets that ships with After Effects. Drum roll please. No, not that one. That's better. Introducing the amazing 3D Pixel Storm. You can find this in the Effects and Presets panel. You simply drag and drop this onto the shape in the comp area, on the layer in the timeline, or in the Effects control window. The default settings will chop up the image that you apply it to into rows and columns, and then have these blocks come back together to form your image. It just looks awesome. Chopping something up never looked so good. Now, we want to reverse this effect, so we'll simply reverse the position of the keyframes. As you can see, the Pixel Storm preset has the effect of chopping the shapes into 3D blocks once in Shapeshifter AE, kind of like a particle system. We'll go ahead and increase the number of rows and columns to create a smaller array of blocks that will be dispersed. So this is what we've created so far. And there you have it. We're done. To recap, today we learned how to use a built-in animation preset found in After Effects called Pixel Storm. We combined it with Shapeshifter AE and we got something completely new and dynamic. And it was really quick to do. So look for my next tutorial on the generator, a built-in feature of Shapeshifter AE. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Sweet.